Head Park Union Church, I dreamed about you last night. <laughs> I know. I won't give you all the details. They don't all make a lot of sense. <laughs> That's kind of the way dreams go, right? But you were clearly on my mind as I was sleeping and in the dream. And, and I think we're going to have to try this for, for a service coming up. You'll have to let me know what you think. Um, in my dream, I asked this question, what sounds make you think of God? And people were calling things out in India. You were like looking them up online and playing YouTube clips. I, I'm not going to make us do this. <laughs> well, we, we can prepare in advance, but people were calling out things like crickets and rivers and babies. And it was a really beautiful dream just to hear these sounds in our space. And I don't know if it has something to do with um, the book that, for those who are joining the book study later, um, one of the main characters really wants to hear crickets, and so maybe that's some of where this was coming from. But I wanted to share it with you, that you were in my dream, and that we were listening to God together. And so my prayer is, as, as we continue our worship, that, that, we, that we hear God. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today's sermon is titled, Hope Punk. And so I must start with a confession which I don't think will surprise many of you, which is that I'm not punk. I've never been punk, despite what my teenage self secretly and desperately wanted. I've never had the punk look. I haven't spent any time at punk rock shows. Again, I don't think this is really going to surprise anyone. I am and have always been fully a nerd. I prefer to spend my free time curled up with a good book, especially a work of speculative fiction. Speculative fiction is a genre that includes both fantasy and sci-fi. And it's from this reading history that I actually draw today's sermon inspiration, not some secret punk past. Although I did used to have a nose ring. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am particularly indebted, I must say, to Reverend Paul Schneider of Washington, who introduced me to this concept last summer as we spent time together in an American Baptist cohort. Punk is a wide term, it can mean a lot of different things, but at its core, it's about resistance. Resistance to the mainstream, resistance to the status quo, be that in fashion, music, aesthetics, or politics. Hope punk as a literary term was popularized and increasingly discussed in the last five years. It emerged as an alternative to what is called the grim, dark genre. A grim, dark story is exactly what it sounds like. It's a dystopian one, with a world in which things are bad, and there's no sign at all that it could get better. Grim, dark stories are nihilistic in their outlook. Hope punk stories offer a different perspective. Things might still be bad in a hope punk world, but people resist. 
Hope Punk insists on a better world, a kinder world. Hope Punk insists that while things may be bad, hope matters. Kindness matters. Justice matters. Resistance matters. You've all likely encountered a Hope Punk story without even realizing it. Star Wars, The Handmaid's Tale, the Marvel movie, The Black Panther. All of these are stories where, yes, forces of evil exist. And yes, there is suffering. And yes, there are what seem to be insurmountable challenges. But people still hope. Or to put it in the words of Samwise Gamgee, a loyal hobbit in the Lord of the Rings universe. It's like in the great stories, full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine all the clearer. There's some good in this world, and it's worth fighting for. It's not only literature and film that exemplify hope punk. It's interesting in the online discourse and articles that have emerged about this genre, people have named figures like Martin Luther King Jr. and Ruth Bader Ginsburg as hope punk. And many have lifted up Jesus and scripture as exemplifying the hope punk ethos. So we can use this lens to approach today's text from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah is speaking to a group of exiles in Babylon. These exiles are living in a foreign land, having been forcibly removed from their homes and they're working as low-wage and oppressed laborers in Babylon. Things are bad. And Jeremiah's words don't initially seem much better. Jeremiah refutes the other prophets who say the exile will soon be over. Oh no, Jeremiah says. This exile will last 70 years. 70 years which could have been meant literally or figuratively for a really, really long time. Jeremiah says it's not going back to the way that it was anytime soon. So don't listen to those other prophets and leaders who are selling you a pipe dream. We're going to be here for a while. But then, then Jeremiah speaks of hope. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. 
Jeremiah reminds the people of their place within the divine story. A story that stretches through time. A story where God is present and active even in the darkest situations. A story of hope. And Jeremiah says to the people, let this story change your life. Don't just listen to it. Let it change your life. He encourages the people to keep living. He encourages them to engage and thereby to resist nihilism or toxic nostalgia. Build houses, he says, and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Get married. Have fun. Have children. Seek the welfare of the city, even if you don't really like the city. Live the story of hope. Hope punk stories, be they scripture or novel, historical or fictional, they have this power to remind us that our everyday choices matter. Our hope, it matters. Our kindness, it matters. Our resistance to all who would say, just give up, it matters. Filmmaker and storyteller Guillermo del Toro puts it this way. Optimism is radical. It's a hard choice, a brave choice. And it is, it seems to me, most needed now. History and fable have both proven that nothing is ever entirely lost. David can take Goliath. Bravery can topple the powerful. These facts are often seen as exceptional, but they are not. Every day, we all become the balance of our choices. Choices between love and fear, belief or despair. No hope is ever too small. As Christians, we are people of divine story. That same story that stretches through time, it includes each and every one of us. Although sometimes we forget. And we need to be reminded, reminded like the disciples are in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus appears here to the disciples after his resurrection. This story falls after the road to Emmaus. And these disciples who have gathered, they saw it all firsthand. They saw Jesus' ministry. They saw his suffering. Some of them even saw his death. And they've, they've heard about the empty tomb from Mary and Mary Magdalene and Joanna. And yet they're still uncertain. So uncertain that they think Jesus is a ghost. And they have to see his wounds. They want to touch his hands. They even make him eat a piece of fish to prove that they can believe what is before their eyes. Jesus patiently does all of this, fish included. And then he reminds the disciples of their place within the divine story. He says, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer. 
and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And Jesus says to these frightened, uncertain disciples, let this story change your life. He says, be witnesses of this story, my story, our story. Keep living, keep engaging. Even though he will no longer be physically with them. He encourages them to live the story of hope. We might relate to these exiles in Babylon or to these disciples in Jerusalem. We too face uncertainty. The uncertainty of what we're going to do with this building, what to do when it rains and some water comes in, Uncertainty of careers, uncertainties in our marriages, relationships, uncertainty about a health outcome or a prognosis, the uncertainty of growing a family, the uncertainty of the length of our days, and what exactly happens after. And so in the face of that, we must remember that we are part of the divine story. It's a good story. It's the best one I know. A story that says that love, it triumphs over evil. That love, it triumphs over death. A story that says we're not defined by our worst actions. A story that says that we are profoundly loved. A story that insists that even when things look dark, our hope, however small it matters, our kindness matters, our acts of justice matter. Our resistance matters. Let that story change your life.